We have been editing and uploading segments of some of our videos from previous trips, including those made years ago that we think may be of interest to others. This video covers one of the treks we made into a rainforest during our trip to the Brazilian Amazon and Rio Negro rivers in 2010. begin because after we start inside we move quiet just mm -hmm. to try to listen and see something and normally we split the groups in two groups but and today we're gonna do the same we're gonna split the group but before we're gonna have a little talk here and then so that we go with one group and then we go with the other group and we're gonna make like a loop passing by to come back here and so the igapo the flooded forest until here, the water was, huh, so mm. easier. A little higher. Was higher, a little bit there. So more about five meters up there, that's where the water goes with the river. And then after that, it's terra firma. So the water from the river doesn't come up there. Terra firma is 90% of the land mass. And, and that's why it's so difficult now, because when the water is here, lots of branch fall and tree fall, and naturally, and that's the way it, it, the organics decompose and goes into the soil again. And so when the water is seed, it's much more difficult for us to get access to terra firma because we have to walk. And in October, all the forest will be out of the water. So you stop the canoe out there and then you walk all this way mm -hmm. to start the terra firma walk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you walk almost twice. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, it's very muddy. You stuck at your feet there, um, and that's the the access for terra firma is always like that, difficult. And terra firma uh, are more difficult to walk because there's more falling trees, branches, and decaying compounds. And one of the way that the rainforest feel and the temperate forest in North America and Europe is, of course, uh, the cradle. Uh, makes a big difference in north and south of the equator about 25 degrees north and south and that's where you have the rainforest and and we are about three degree in Manaus and here we be about almost two and a half degree and the way we go up we're gonna be about half degree uh, far from the equator mm. and here we don't have those deciduous trees that you have in North America that makes your soils very rich. Uh, our trees here, they keep their leaves year-round because here we have only two seasons. We have rainy season, which is the temperature about 29, 32, and then we have the dry season, where the temperature goes about 30 to 40, some days, or a little more, sometimes 45 in uh, November the last days of November. It depends on the dry season. Mm. And it's said that this year, August and September, we're going to have about 35 to 38 degrees, mostly, for these two months. So, unusual for all these um, 100 years for the temperature rising up around this area. So, we may have lots of stress on the forest. Um, stress can be done by too much water or too less water. And 2005, we had very um, few water. The dry season was really severe, very hard. And most of these areas we've been, they were all dry. And, and the rainy season last year was so hard, and the water came up for the last 50 years, uh, half meter more than the normal. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't seem much for you to think just in a, in a place of half meter. But when you think about hundreds of hectares of forest flood, 
uh, health detail it's a lot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also the time that the water delay inside these areas it's also a lot because normally for example it comes right here and then suddenly after 50 years it comes right here so these trees here are not used to get flood mm -hmm. so they may die most of them okay. and stress and so same as the dry season so if the water delay too much down there these trees here they need the right amount of water at the right time of the year if the water doesn't come they stress and they die so it has to be the equilibrium of the two rainy season and dry season exactly almost the same but we have lots of chain not just here but all over the world and mm -hmm. climate is not uh, the same anymore mm -hmm. but um, just to emphasize about look here how much leaves you find here mm -hmm. on the top of the soil here mm -hmm. and if you walk on North America and, and Europe you can feel half meat or more of leaves on the ground and it's stuck your boot and then you walk and then you almost cannot walk here it's very firm you don't have this mm -hmm. huh? and when you spread your boot you see very few leaves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. after the leaves you see what you see the roots the roots mm -hmm. roots and then you see a little bit of sand especially on this area here the lowlands there's lots of sand <coughs> and then you see clay argilla clay mm -hmm. sand that's the composition of the soils about 95 percent or more the soils are considered very poor on the uh, rainforest and everything comes back because of the forest itself in Europe if you cut the forest and you leave it if you cut for agriculture and then you leave it behind for 10 or 20 years or so the forest will come back because the nutrients and the minerals are there on the soil here if you cut the forest you harvest everything so all the minerals and nutrients necessary is on the tree cells itself when you cut it and you slash and burn that's the normal system here you kill everything so there's nothing down there this may be about these here centimeters of good soil hmm. the rest is all clay so when you one hectare the protection which is the canopy are not more anymore there slash and burn normally happens in the dry season so then they plant on the rainy season rainy season there is no canopy to protect the soil hmm. then the rain will wash the minerals down to the river the ash actually the biomass which is in the ash then the dry season comes again after the rainy season so the soil is bare because your crop is maybe half meat only mm -hmm. and there's not much canopy to protect so the sun goes straight on the soil and then that's the beginning of the lateralization mm -hmm. of the compact of the soil uh, if it's one hectare and then you have 30 hectares and then you have one more hectare it's okay but if it's 30 40 hectare knock it down and leave behind especially if you raise cattle on the place mm. uh, because you need to fire constantly to get rid of the weed mm. uh, so 80 years use then the, the farmers abandon that area mm. and then you have to look for another spot to start again mm. and then you leave that spot behind and maybe 200 or 300 years if nobody else comes and do the same it will come back for primary forest mm. so it's really very hard for the rainforest uh, to be considered the uh, feeding of the world in terms of agriculture or, or cattle so we have to forget about that but these roots here which is responsible to uh, take up of the minerals so everything that falls here breaks very quickly because of fungus and bacteria mm. the decomposition on the rainforest is about 60 to 70 percent as quickly as any other place uh, because here we have constantly heat and humidity and that's perfect for uh, fungus and bacteria so you have fungus there also in North America and Europe but you have about three four months of cooler time and they not very active on that time and that's when your trees uh, lose their leaves 
it's the end of the dry and then beginning of the winter so the leaves come down so the fungus they are not very active so it's time for accumulation of leaves on the soil and slowly decomposing back down to the soil here now everything falls on top everything breaks here everything goes right on top of the soil back to the tree cells itself all these roots here are from these big trees and mm -hmm. we're gonna walk you're gonna see roots all over not just small root but big roots mm -hmm. this root here see start mm -hmm. very thin and goes look mm -hmm. mm -hmm. this is the roots of this tree mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It goes far away, look. Mm -hmm. Like snakes on the soil. Mm -hmm. So if the roots are not very deep, if the trees are very tall, they cannot be a very large. We don't have much wind in here, but a 15 mm -hmm. km per hour wind is already enough to knock down lots mm -hmm. of trees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But think about layers of the forest, and that's why we have this security of the forest because of the different layers of the forest layers like different size of trees we have about five layers when you you out in the boat you see the forest is like uniform but now and then you see a big tree big canopy coming out of the forest that is the emergent layer that's the highest layer of the forest the fifth layer of the forest and if you think about life on that layer uh, that exists there, you don't find the life that exists there, down here. Mm. So just to see how fragile it is. If you knock down these emergent trees, there's no time for adaptation or evolution for this creature that lives up there. Not just insects or amphibians or reptiles, but also plants like epiphytes, like orchids and bromelias. Some of these plants, they live up there because they need more sunlight and more rain and more air than the others uh, to reproduce, to be dispersed by the wind and, and to give the existence for the future. So if you cut these big trees, so these are, you're losing this biomass, all this richness that lives up there. Harpy eagle, they, they live on that layer. Uh, howler monkeys, they normally uh, live up there also. So lots of species uh, that happens only up there. Uh, the same as here, there are species that are here that they never been up there. They just live here because they need more shade, less rain, less sun than the others. Birds and arthropods, uh, like ants. There are ants that live here, but there are ants that live on the half, on the middle of the forest, uh, on the, uh, the third layer of the forest. And if you look to the plants, normally you see how can it be layers of forest? What does it mean? Its size, if you take from the forest floor, from these little bushes here, or small plants that we don't know if this is going to be one of these emergent trees in the future, or if it's going to be just a bush for the rest of its life. But you take this layer of the forest and feel about two meters. This is the first layer of the forest. It's just like you imagine a sandwich with five pieces of bread. <laughs> and the first piece of bread you have some ham, some cheese or peanut butter. And you put another second layer of bread, then you have more like eggs or, or hen or whatever you want. So you're constructing this five layer and between them there is life that lives there. That they depend on living on that layer. For example here, do you feel any wind right down here? Little. No, you don't really. see movements on the leaves of wind. Mm -hmm. So if you are wind dispersal tree, you're not going to produce your flower here for pollination or your seeds here. Huh? But if you look a little bit up on that big tree there, mm -hmm. you almost don't see wind. Yeah. But now and then, yeah. Yeah. Now. <laughs> now and then, there is a little breeze that comes in. On the forest, and that's enough for you to be disposed by the wind. So, if you see some plants with fruits or, or flowers down here, that's a bush, because big trees they do not produce flowers or, or fruits down here. So, if it is, it's a bush. The other aspect of the rainforest: look to this small tree. The canopy is very small, mm -hmm. and it's very slender, 
and there's not many branch and that's why there is a lot of diversity of species here because of the competition for the sunlight mm -hmm. so these emergent trees they block all the sunlight all the rain all the wind mm -hmm. from the top down here so what does it happen with this little tree here they are uh, storage energy lots of energy on this tree but they cannot uh, grow because there's no sunlight on them except when the sun moves then a little bit of sunlight but these trees here they block the sunlight mm -hmm. so they waiting for some of this tree to fall and one one of these trees fall that's when these uh, small bush and trees here will explode in energy mm -hmm. because of the sun will transform by the photosynthesis and then they will start to grow but they will not produce canopy right here they go like this here very thin mm -hmm. up, 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 up. when they pass by the others that's when they shoot the canopy to block again the sun and the rain to avoid the competition down here with them themselves there's another one here behind uh, AB here Look, very very little and there's another one close by here so who is going to grow more here when one of these trees fall these trees all will start to so it depends where you are on the soil, it depends on the kind of soil you are, it depends on the amount of tree that falls. Sometimes the tree don't fall, the branch broke, then you have a small gap. Or the big tree falls, then you have a big gap. So it depends on which kind of tree you are and adaptations for these different gaps. There's lots of sunlight, there's very few sunlight, some spots. The seeds here, they are very sensitive for the sun. That's the other problem. If a seed fall here today on the shade, it may stay here for one year or for five years or even more because they need to stay there to get lots of humidity until somebody fall and then the sun comes and then they are ready to germinate. But if you take this seed from here and then you plant it somewhere out on the sun, they will not come out. Mm -hmm. Or if they come out, but they will die very soon. Mm -hmm. Because they dehydrate. And that's one of the problems of fire and the rainforest. Because the seeds, they need to be on the ground with moisture to fill the energy. And then when a tree falls, the sun hits them, then they start to germinate. And then the other branch that blocks, then you very little, then you wait again for more years. So some of this small tree here, it may be about one year or ten years. How can a tree like this here be ten years old? When the sun hits them, they can grow about half a meter per year or sometimes one meter per year. But when in the shade, you maybe grow about five centimeters to ten centimeters or less than that. So it takes time until somebody falls, until the sun hits you and then you start to grow. So let's think about average life expectancy of the rainforest trees. Um, from which year to how, how old do you think is a rainforest tree? Mm -hmm. Average, just average, not... 300? Huh? 300? Mm. Average. Average is about 100 to 250, 350 years, average. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because there's lots of bacteria and fungus so mm -hmm. about 30 percent of the rainforest trees they are damaged they are hollow and that's because of adaptations for nitrogen fixation and also for oxygen uh, there are trees that grows about 1000 a year 2000 years or more very few trees grows like that brazil nut is one tree that grew goes about 1,000 years. Mm. But most of the trees, the average is 100 to 250, 350 years. So because of decomposition, it's not necessary to fall for the neighbors send the root to you. If these trees feel that you sick, that you have attacked by fungus, they come with the roots, they stuck right on you, and then they start to suck your nutrients mm. and minerals from you. So. Mm to accelerate the process of decomposition until you fall and then everybody else will come and stack the roots on you.
So this is just a little bit of the complex of the rainforest. Do, do you ever see scientists here studying things like mycorrhiza and so forth? No. No, they don't no. worry no. too much. Most of the uh, research, that's one of the big problems. Yeah. Uh, most of the research are done around cities, yeah. mm -hmm. like Manaus and other mm -hmm. cities. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because nobody wants to leave the family mm -hmm. or you know, the comfort of the town mm -hmm. to stay five, ten years, because it's not necessary just you come for one month. How are you going to start in one month? Richard Schulte spent 30 years in Colombia and the Amazon, but that was in 1940. Can you imagine that? Yeah. That long time. Yeah. Mark Plotkin also. Mark Plotkin. He, he was one of Schulte's students. Yeah. He stood about 12 years around South America. But you leave everything behind mm -hmm. and leave with the skills of the forest and <clears throat> experience the rainforest. It's not yeah. like we have this nice boat mm -hmm. and then we come here for two only, hours. Only mm -hmm. two of Schulte's students are alive now. Mark Plotkin and Mike Balick from the New York Botanical Garden. Mm -hmm. All the others died. died. Mm -hmm. And they were young. Yeah. And so we, we want to see the rainforest, but we, we give up very soon, I mean. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's enough for us because we come here and we stay one hour, two hour, have a little walk <laughs> and then we go back to the boat and have lunch, have a good shower, mm -hmm. have a good nap or read a book and mm -hmm. drink a beer. Mm -hmm. But good to idea. feel the rainforest, to <laughs> see the wildlife, mm -hmm. huh? the animals that you always imagine and then when you come you say, oh, it's not worth to go there because there's no animals, I haven't seen any. Mm -hmm. Think about how much time you spend here. Think about how much time BBC and all these National Geographic, they stay in a place mm -hmm. to get these good shots yeah. for us, mm -hmm. to stay home We're with protecting nice the beer rainforest by and, not staying too and long. popcorn and just enjoy this uh, one hour of good movie. Years, it's years mm -hmm. waiting for the best moment to get mm -hmm. those nice shots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we come here and we see howler monkeys at the first day mm -hmm. and we see the Guyana Saki monkey, mm -hmm. huh? as mm -hmm. we saw. Not yeah. very well, but mm -hmm. we saw it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we still have lots of chance to see more wildlife. Mm -hmm. And that's why we talk just right here and then we're going to go very quiet walking through. Last trip was the first time I saw a bushmaster in my life mm -hmm. with a group mm -hmm. and by myself was mm -hmm. the first time. 45 years, first time you see a bushmaster. That's why you have your machete. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, because you don't see, it doesn't mean they don't exist here. That's what we have to think. Oh, but I haven't seen a sloth here. It doesn't mean because you didn't see the sloth, they are not here. Look too, look around you. So, if you don't have the perception where you look and what you look for, you pass by everything and they're there. We will be watched. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you've been watching. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Those eyes over there. Yes, sir. Bamfo right here. Oi. That's cinco. What's on? Falta um ainda. Some comes from down up. Mm -hmm. Look how it is. How it goes. From here, then it crawls it here. And then from there, eventually, it will go like there. And there. Tree that we call stilt roots. Stilt. Stilt. To support the trees in poor soils, normally you have a lot stilt of roots or stilt roots. This is the beginning of the buttress, but it never really got yeah. very big. Yeah, and this is another tree, huh? This is one tree and this is another tree. What about the one behind? Over here? Yeah. No, that's the same one, the same okay. tree here. No. That's the same, yeah. Here. Why? Why somebody come and spend gas? and work and then leave the tree here. Poachers. Yeah. You lost one of your gators. Me? And create this. That's what I don't know. Uh, or or was the plant the the ants here? Uh-huh. The plant may provided this and some sugar for the ants. Right. And then the ants so we don't know how it started actually. That's so, so uh, presumably, though, this is a symbiotic relationship, yes. mutually beneficial. Yes. Yeah, they call it mutualism. Mutualism. I'm going to take one of these leaves here. I mean, I can see what it does for the ant, but I don't understand what it does for the plant. 
The plant? Perfection. Yeah, huh? Perfection. Ants has some poison, some acid, oh, okay. and that somebody comes like an insect uh -huh. or something thought the leaves, so the ants coming out uh -huh. mm -hmm. and patch the leaves and, and quick somebody who is there. Like me, I just got here, I got one bite already, and then start to itch, and then I say, let's go. Right, let's right. leave this plant here. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> this is a lycopod. And this is a lycopod. Another lycopod. No, 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 not at all. It's in the lycopod family. Yeah. The lycopods were almost as big as trees. Uh -huh. Very, very, per not, these are not flowering plants. Uh -huh. They never flower. Yeah. And close by here. It's like a little, almost looks like a raw peanut okay. that's not ripe and that's where it has both sexes oh. and they pollinate well they fertilize each right. other they don't right. pollinate there's no pollen right. no flower no flower but they make the uh, embryo right. and it grows into this okay but this is a like a fern that Put has spores right? it, well it does have spores but the fern is more advanced than this mm -hmm. This is more primitive. Mm -hmm. Now, how does the fern uh, promulgate itself? Um, it, well, it's got spores, like he said. Okay. The spores germinate, sprout, and then it goes through a sexual cycle. There's two cycles, you see. So, things can come Spines. Yeah. And by this branch here, it goes there and pick up the fruit. I've seen squirrel monkey uh -huh. uh, eating the fruits of this palm. Protection. And it's not just the, the, yeah, no. the, the trunk. The leaves also have spines, see? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Do you know if the natives eat the corazon, the palm? The hearts yeah. of palm yeah. come from some yeah. of these things. You they know how you buy a salad palm. with a heart of palm in it? Mm. It'll blow it down. This is a huge tree that fell. Probably hard to see. And shallow roots. Yeah. So those are the two main things here. Right. Fungus that attack the trees and shallow roots, right. high It actually move around itself. Ears. Socratia ixoriza. Is the it puts out another root. Socratia to push the tree. And the then the other one you come to it on the other side. Here, so it can move. Have a touch here on these roots. And feel how sharp are the spines or darns. This is one of the main sources of greater on the forest for the Indians to grind Brazil nut and manioc. They took about three, three or four of them together and used as a grater to grind mm -hmm. the guaraná, uh -huh, the berry, okay. uh -huh. to grind the manioc. If we imagine you in the forest run at night and then stuck your hand here or your head or your legs. Uh. That's why many people, they don't survive on the rainforest. Because they panic. And panic is horrible, especially here. Here you have to be patient. That's how you learn how wonderful life is, is when you're lost in a place like this. It's called Araba. Araba, I don't know the scientific name or English name for this tree. It's in the Legumi family. The other side of the tree. Your camera is closed, Marian. You have to take the cover the lens. I do that on this side, but they come that side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was one of the times because all the time working with my father and mm -hmm. he sting me. So you remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.